country decides and the president decides it's time to take a pause, everybody has to step back and let that happen. President Obama did it. President Bush did it after 9-11. We know that there was a warrant okayed through a FISA court um, to survey someone within Trump's orbit. Iran and North Korea continue to test ballistic missiles that could threaten American warships. Casey Anthony breaking her silence for the first time since her daughter's murder. I don't give a about what anybody thinks about me. I'm okay with myself. I sleep pretty good at night. The great company, ExxonMobil, is going to be investing $20 billion. I said we're bringing back jobs. This is one big example of it. And we're celebrating IHOP, who is giving out free short stacks today. They're hoping that you give a donation to charity. If you're because sure, it's Tuesday. <laughs> That's if you put together free one pancake on. You can raise your hands. Absolutely. That's what the commercial says. Right. You know, Raise your hands if you're sure. I'll tell you who's raising their hands. Uh, the president of the United States. He, What's he uh, saying? Look, he was uh, adamant on the campaign trail. He was going to get rid of Obamacare. And today, uh, there is a plan perhaps to start voting on a new replacement bill today. We right. And he also had a travel ban that's out there, too. So, And we got to see other people in the administration for the first time. Meanwhile, the Trump administration gearing up for a fierce fight as Republicans unveil their highly anticipated health care overhaul. What's in it? Kristen Fisher is live in Washington, D.C. with the details that we know so far. Kristen? Hey, well, this is the moment that Republicans have been promising for years, and yet some conservatives on Capitol Hill are already criticizing it by calling it essentially Obamacare light. Congressman Jim Jordan, who was a member of the House Freedom Caucus, told CNN, quote, I don't see any significant changes here. It's significantly the same thing to me, so it sort of doesn't change my position, but we'll talk to our guys tomorrow night. So what's in this bill? What would it do? Well, this bill would repeal the individual and employer mandates immediately, and almost all Republicans can agree on that. But here's where it gets tricky. The subsidies would be repealed and replaced by monthly tax credits. The protections for those with pre-existing -exist conditions, those would be preserved. Young people, they'll still be allowed to stay on their parents' plan until the age of 26. And here's another big sticking point. This bill would restructure the Medicaid program to move it away from the expansion enacted by the Affordable Care Act. Now, some experts say that that could result in millions of Americans losing access to their health insurance, but the Republican leaders who put forward this bill, like Congressman Kevin Brady, he says that this is the bill that Republicans have been waiting for. It is uh, Obamacare gone. We repeal all those taxes, those mandates, those subsidies. Uh, there's nothing left there. And instead, we give them the same tax break that we give workers at big businesses. Now, for President Trump, this is the first major piece of legislation that he's trying to get through Congress. It will be fulfilling a major campaign promise. And already this morning, his press secretary, Sean Spicer, is up and active on Twitter trying to sell this bill to perhaps some wary conservatives. Brian Ainsley and Steve. Thank yeah. you very much. Well, somebody else is trying to sell the bill is uh, Mick Mulvaney. He's the White House uh, budget director and former South Carolina congressman. He joins us live from our nation's capital. Good morning to you, sir. Good morning. Morning, guys. Is it really free pancake day? Can right. you believe it? You're yeah. half an hour late. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> budget. I'm not sure budget wise if it makes any sense, but this goes to charity. So right. Uh, and if you need to find an IHOP in South Carolina, right there on Two Notch Road. Remember that one? That's the one we always went to. Two Notch Road. There you go. Yep, it's a good one. Well, She's right. So, uh, Mick, let's talk a little bit about uh, the president's plan to replace uh, Obamacare w with a new idea. So far, some Republicans have said, we just heard the quote from uh, Jim Jordan, mm, not, not too crazy about it at this point. How do you get everybody on board on your side? You know, and I used to be in the Freedom Caucus with Jim Jordan. He's a, a, a dear, close friend of mine. I, I disagree with his analysis. Let's take a look at what the bill does. Uh, the mandates in Obamacare are gone. Uh, the taxes in Obamacare are gone. The penalties in Obamacare are gone. We've taken the government out of the equation. The government used to be between patients and their doctors, and that's gone. Sure, we kept the, 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 um, the treatment of pre-existing conditions. That's we great. kept the ideas for the 26-year-olds. But those were ideas that states were working on long before Obamacare got involved. So uh, I, I, don't, I don't agree with the analysis. If you decide not to be a part of this and not sign up for it, are you penalized? No. Which is different. That's it. So I mean, great. plus, and, and what, what's the bigger picture? I mean, if you look at what the one of the main um, things that undid Obamacare was that it wasn't really affordable care. It was affordable coverage. You could afford to have insurance, but you couldn't afford to get sick. And that was one of the things that really sort of went right to the heart great of the point. matter. And one of the things we wanted to fix. And that's what these tax credits are for. So that if you get sick, 
you can actually afford to go to the doctor. Mm -hmm. Well, I guess the big picture, is, uh, the big thing is going to be, number one, can you get Republicans on board? Number two, with the CBO, how it's going to score it. Mick, are you, con uh, Congressman, I mean, Director, are you concerned <laughs> that politics will be uh, playing a role in this? Because the CBO was wildly off about Obamacare. They were. They, in fact, if you go back and look at the CBO numbers, they thought that millions more people would be on it. We knew that wasn't the case. It turns out the CBO was wrong. But uh, we spent some good time on it on the Office of Management and Budget. I know that Health and Human Services, Tom Price, who also was in the House with me and Jim Jordan, uh, have looked at it as well. And I'm absolutely confident that in large part because of the efficiencies we drive into Medicaid, we give the states something that Republicans have wanted for a long time, which is we give the states more control over their own Medicaid dollars. That drives tremendous long-term savings. Mm -hmm. So not only do we think this is a way to give people health care that they can afford, it also helps our long-term debt situation. Are you going to be able to get enough for Republicans on board to pass this thing through? Yes, and here's why. The president is 100% behind this. We've worked closely with the House. He is in on this. We will be pushing this. Um, this is the Obamacare replacement plan that everybody asked for. It's the Obamacare replacement plan he promised when he ran, and we will get this through both the House and the Senate. Senator Rand what? Paul, among the people that is not for this, he made it clear he had the big show on Friday, and he's been pretty staunch. He says, I'm with the Freedom Caucus on this. And Rand, another friend of mine, keep in mind that no one could see the actual bill until last night. And importantly, and I don't think anyone's talked about this yet, uh, another difference between this and Obamacare, it will actually go through the committee process. So all of those folks who have questions about it, have ideas on how to improve Good. it, could the bill get better? Sure, we're going to let the process work, which is another failing in Obamacare that we're fixing. One of the things, Mick, that uh, the President of the United States, when he was running for president, said out on the campaign trail regarding insurance coverage was, you know, we're going to make sure everybody's covered. I read, uh, I think it was in the Post, the Washington Post, that said that uh, to cover low-income Americans, they'd wind up with a tax credit of up to $14,000 mm -hmm. per year for a family. Is that really going to do it? Yeah, in fact, we're doing better than what the president said. Not only is uh, we're actually going to give folks right. care they can afford to use, um, and that's that's why we use the tax credit. It's an effective right. safety net. Keep in mind, it's for folks who don't get coverage at work. Um, so again, it is following through what the president said on his campaign trail. Good. We we did something last week that you do probably every day now, and that had a chance to talk to the president. We asked him about entitlement reform and somehow balancing the budget on just discretionary spending. Here's what he said, and if you don't mind, we used you as a, as a quote. <laughs> he said you have to take a, an axe to entitlements. Your Treasury Secretary says we're not touching it. Who's right? Well, I'll tell you what, who's right. Uh, if the economy sails, then I'm right, because I said I'm not touching Social Security. So the OMB is wrong? I, I'm not saying anybody's wrong. I'm just saying this. If we, and, and I think this is what's going to happen, Brian, I think our country's going to sail. When we start letting these jobs happen that are being all tied up in regulation, you know, I'm cutting taxes, but something I'm doing more important than taxes, I think actually even more important, and I was a little surprised to see this because if you go to the great business leaders, they're more excited about this than cutting the taxes. Regulation. So he never really answered the question, but you want to see entitlement reform, but you're not going to get it at least this year. Right. And listen, one thing the president said there is absolutely correct, which is economic growth, a healthy economy, fixes a lot of these problems. In fact, if you go back and you look at the 1990s during the Clinton administration, they were talking about doing Hillary care at that time. It didn't work. It didn't go. But more people actually got added to health insurance roles in the 1990s under the Clinton administration because of economic growth. We've lived in a generation now that doesn't know what it means to be in a booming economy. If we can do that, it solves a lot of our problems. Mick, so, what, does this so mean do for, what does it mean for Planned Parenthood? Um, we defund Planned Parenthood and move extra money over to the federally qualified health care clinics uh, to sort of take that issue off the table. This is not about denying women access to care. We want them to have it. They will have it. They simply won't get it through places that also provide abortions. Okay, before you go, prediction, when's this going to pass, if it will? Yeah, I think it does pass the House before Easter. Uh, the Senate, the more deliberative body, um, a little bit hard to predict. Uh, but the president's all in on it, and we'll be pushing it for the next several weeks until it gets done. So right. maybe it'll be a really good Friday. Um, every Friday's a good Friday. It's not, as good as free, not as good as free, uh, free Pancake Tuesdays, though. Right. Hello. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> he's right. a little concerned about the giveaway. There I'm surprised. Go. He's, a, he's a guy worried about our budget. All right. Thank he's you, a director. Mike. Great to see you. Thank you, sir. Thanks, y'all. All right. It is 710 now in New York City. City, y'all. <laughs> did you hear him? He I did, y and he said it correctly. Yeah. That was nice. Yeah. He's from right. the Carolinas, too. Exactly. Uh, we have some stories that we have been following for you all morning, and we begin overseas.
A Fox News alert for you. Iran flexing its muscles at sea, test firing ballistic missiles and destroying a floating barge more than 150 miles away. Iranian forces also buzzing U.S. sailors, sending fast attack vessels within 600 yards of a Navy ship. And then also in North Korea, this happening, provoking the U.S., the country now saying that their recent missile launches were tests to see if they could strike American bases in Japan, giving Washington reason to worry. They have an ICBM that could reach the United States. We've seen them parade them around. We've seen them in the factory. What they haven't done is test it. Well, the U.N. Security Council holding an emergency meeting tomorrow to talk about the launches. And a wannabe jihadi is behind bars, accused of threatening to behead his own mother. A 26-year-old from Long Island, New York, facing terrorism charges for attempting to provide material support to ISIS. Officers nabbing him after intercepting pro-ISIS Facebook messages. Investigators say that he twice tried to join the group overseas, but he couldn't find a way in. His attorney wants a mental and medical evaluation. And to some extreme weather, a tornado outbreak wreaking havoc on the Midwest. One twister tearing across Missouri overnight, leaving a path of destruction in the city of Trimble. Look at this. Several of the houses, they were completely knocked off their foundation. And then that same storm system sparking a tornado in Zimmerman. That's just north of Minneapolis, and it is the earliest on record in that state. And more winning for President Trump. You're going to win so much, you may even get tired of winning. ExxonMobil now promising to invest $20 billion over the next 10 years. It's a lot of dough expanding their production capacity along the Gulf Coast. And the plan will create, listen to this, 45,000 new jobs with an average salary of around $100,000. will certainly also be a game changer in the import to export ratio of oil and gas products for the, uh, the state, the U.S. And those are looking trend lines. That's right. Why More bring jobs. it from overseas when yeah. we got it right here? That's right. Thank you. Yes, you're welcome. All right. Uh, meanwhile, while you were sleeping, Casey Anthony breaking her silence for the very first time, what she just revealed about her daughter's murder. You're going to want to hear it. And what does the rest of the world think about President Trump? Have you guys visited Trump Tower yet? Yes. And we're about to make America great again hats. I think he's a great guy because obviously he's the first guy in the world who doesn't look for money. He got the money already. Wow, I, we promise you won't hear this anywhere else. That story next. <laughs> so well, Donald Trump had a busy day yesterday. Number one, he's like, okay, I have an Obamacare proposal. Uh, number two, I also have a travel ban to introduce. But this one you might accept. Six nations, not five, na not, not right. seven Leaving nations. Leaving out Iraq. Sure. Uh, here's the other thing. Keep in mind, this is always temporary. It's always been temporary. It, it 120 winds up, days. It winds up being uh, probably shorter than the court tests. The other thing is it's going to be challenged in court. Without a doubt, the political left doesn't like the idea. They say it is still a Muslim ban, even though they took this stuff out of the original stuff for the new one. People are going to, the ACLU is already talking about taking them into the court. There are six countries that are still in the ban, and three of them are state sponsors of terrorism, and three have served as safe havens for terrorists. And one thing that's wrong is Christians have been persecuted. You've been seeing their, their uh, uh, the churches have been destroyed, the historic buildings have been uh, wrecked, and they have been annihilated. They've been given 24 hours to leave, or they're going to all be killed. They've been cr literally crucified. Sure. And there was a special ca carve out for them to come here, exempt them. Mm -hmm. But they said right. that looked too much like Muslim only, so they they so no longer Jesse, get special treatment. So Jesse Waters, we sent him out to Trump Towers is right over here, about a block away. And he was out there. If you walk out there, it's blocked off. There's so many tourists that mm -hmm. are taking pictures in front of it, selfies with Trump Tower in the background. So he went out there to find out what they think about the travel ban. People from other countries. From other countries. Where are you from? Italy. Germany. Scotland. You come from France? Yeah. Have you guys visited Trump Tower yet? Yes. And we're about to make America great again hats. What do you think about President Trump? I've got to admit, I agree with a lot of his principles. I just don't think he comes across right. I think he's a little bit too heavy-handed with some things. We don't really agree with his policies because, especially regarding the Arab world, he thinks straight and he does what he says. When you do what you say, that's good. I think he's a very good man, you know. He likes America. I love America. You know. Do you want to protect America? I think he's a great guy because obviously he's the first guy in the world who doesn't look for money. He got the money already. I think he speaks for a silent majority personally. I think the world's got a little bit too much 
PC. And I think if we were a bit more like that back at home, um, I think we'd get on a lot better. He's got his opinions. Got to give the man a chance. Trump's travel ban, do you think that's a good idea? Good idea. For me, good idea. You've got to guard your borders. And 9-11 proves we have to keep control of security better. Do you like the travel ban, yes or no? Maybe it's a little bit good because when I, when I see what happens in Germany, uh, we have all these terrorists. If we would not have them, I would feel uh, more secure. Are you scared? Yes, I am. Look at that, the international perspective of Donald Trump and his plans. Which kind of falls in line with how Americans think. If you look at all the polls, the majority of Americans do agree with it. It's 120 days. Yeah, uh, Thomas Freeman made a statement over the weekend in the New York Times saying, oh, the rest of the world is laughing at us, and how is Donald Trump going to go overseas and hold his head high after this tweet? I don't think he's really got a problem. I think, in fact, a lot of other leaders are following in his footsteps in their country. They're thinking Germany, France, England first, and they're having success. Meanwhile, coming up straight ahead. Can't read? No problem. You can teach. Literacy tests for teachers, a thing of the past. Mm. Finally. <laughs> that was unbelievable. And have you heard? All right, we're back with the Fox News Alert now. Everyone is safe and accounted for after an avalanche strikes a resort in the French Alps. According to initial reports, 30 people were buried under the snow, but rescue operations are now over. And a win in the war on terror. Do you believe this? The Trump administration just killed the former Gitmo detainee released by Barack Obama in 2009. His name, Yashir Al-Sirmi, once considered the worst of the worst, killed in a U.S. airstrike. The Obama administration let him walk free in 2009, even though the Department of Defense recommended he stay behind. But the good news is he is now dead. Ainsley, Steve. Thanks, Brian. The stock market has been on a constant surge since the election. Up, up, and away. Mm -hmm. Dow even closing at over 21,000 for the first time ever. Look at that. So how can you make the most out of your retirement funds during this historic run? Joining us now to discuss is Chris Hogan, a personal finance expert with Ramsey Solutions and the author of the book, Retire Inspired. There's a picture of it. Go pick it up. So, Chris, what do we do with the Trump bump? How do, how do we use that? to our advantage. Well, I think the first thing to realize is that whenever you're investing, it's a lot like riding a roller coaster. You're going to have some ups as well as some downs. Right now, we're on the climb. But I want people to kind of be cautious and remain aware. Uh, be aware of your investment strategy. Understand kind of what's going on and where do you need to make some tweaks. And I often liken it to your investing strategy is a little bit like your driving strategy, right? <laughs> uh, your risk tolerance, right? right? Do you all drive the speed limit? Sometimes. Sometimes. You drive five I miles. I don't drive. You don't drive at all. So driving the speed limit, sometimes, what that means is you have a low risk tolerance. You don't want a ticket. Sure. People tend to invest in that same strategy. They can either go very conservative or overly aggressive. Absolutely. Now, here's the problem with the fact that the, the market has gone up, up, and away. And that is people are, if they haven't invested their money in it, they're going, look, it's going up. I hate to miss this. Investing at the top is always kind of a bad strategy, isn't it? It really is, because you're coming in when the price is at its highest. Right. And so what I always encourage people to do is talk to an investment professional. Really kind of walk this through and look long term. What's your strategy and what are you going to do? All right, so let's go through some of the viewer emails. Jennifer in Oregon says, my husband and I would like to retire in the next 10 years. With the growth in the market, at what point do we move our retirement savings into more conservative funds to protect our money? Ah, uh, the protection question. Everyone wants to protect their money, which is very good. You work very hard for it. The problem is, is if you go too conservative, what will happen is you won't outpace inflation. Sure. Inflation hovers between 3 and 4%. That just means the cost of things is rising. So you don't want to go too conservative where your money's not growing at all. So again, get some guidance from an investment professional, kind of walk through, have a strategy on how we're going to begin to make some tweaks to your overall strategy. You don't want to invest in something that could make you a lot of money, but could lose all your money. Yeah, you don't want to ride that, that Snapchat. crazy. Snapchat. Yeah, exactly. There have been a <laughs> lot of things, and I've learned my lesson the hard way. Sure. So don't go it alone. Get some guidance. All right. Terry from New Jersey wrote us and asked this. I inherited $42,000 a couple of years ago. Nice. Should I put this money toward my mortgage or invest it in the stock market while it's doing well? Okay. Well, whenever you're walking through and you're talking about receiving an inheritance, that's a blessing. Mm -hmm. And you want to get as much mileage out of this money as you can. Sure. So looking at this, if they only have a mortgage, I would say put some of the money toward that mortgage, but also invest some. Right. I firmly believe in that strategy of getting the most mileage from the money as you can. 
Okay, Chris, the next Very one good. is Lori in Wisconsin. She says, my husband is 62 and I am 60. We have about $1.5 million tied into the market. We are afraid of another economic downturn or turn down. Mm. Uh, how do we know when the time is right to retire? Okay, so first I would congratulate them on working so hard That's to get a good investment. Right. Yeah. That is fantastic. Now, whenever it comes to talking about the timing of retirement, it's really a matter of where you are in your lifestyle. So I would encourage them to talk with an investment professional, mm -hmm. try to talk about how much are they going to live on per month of that nest egg they put away and begin to do this now before they retire. Be careful of lifestyle. We're always one decision from going backwards financially, right? So we want to be very, very careful Great. and protect what you've built. All right. And Ainsley from Manhattan wants to know, should I buy a car? <laughs> I sound like I'm privileged. You got a bunch of yellow ones running up and down the street. <laughs> you can buy a car. Just buy it with cash. Start to and set aside some And you say never buy a new car. Buy used, right? Absolutely. Buy used because why? It's going to depreciate. So buy with cash, start putting some money aside each month, go on the lot, find the car you want, negotiate a great deal, and then drive away. Okay. All right. Thanks, Chris. Thank you, guys. Always a pleasure. Good yes. to see you. Thank you, sir. Absolutely. Right. Are Democrats playing dumb on President Trump's wiretapping claims? New evidence uncovered from Hillary Clinton now raising that question. We're going to ask former Clinton campaign manager Robbie Mook about that coming up next. And if you thought you were bad at parking, you can't be as bad as this guy. That's a 1959 Corvette.